Hello world! I am Ivana and I am back with another video about my UX design course project. If you remember last time in the video uh, that I walked you through the project, I said that I would create a case study that I would post on Behance and I could say, finally, this has happened. <laughs> It took me maybe two or three weeks, but I finally wrote it. I uh, put it together and I posted it on Behance. But in this video, I wanted to tell you more about um, the structure and what I decided to include in it, why, um, how it works and how it all fits together. Let's go. All right, we are again in Figma and Let's start with the, um, the structure of the case study. I, w uh, I watched several clips of other people uh, commenting on um, different case studies or people making case studies and I took most of the um, advice that they said was good to include in a case study and I tried to implement it um, in my project. And I didn't take that deep of an approach into the uh, into the UX process. So mine is a bit uh, on the surface level project. It's not super deep. So the case study itself is also not super deep. But I wanted to include the things that I have gone through in my head, what I've planned, what type of analysis I've made, what type of um, decisions I took, why did I take them like this, and in the end include uh, what can be done, what can be done to further the project and what type of uh, new features maybe can be, uh, can be implemented. So let's start. I want to start with the, the first like this will be like a thumbnail in, on Behance or something and it will look pretty <laughs> with the mock-up. It says what uh, the project is, the project name, a little bit of a short description. It's a U UX case study and uh, it's created in 2023. My role was a UX designer and I was self-managed because I didn't have anyone to manage my work. The tools I used were Figma, Google Forms, because I created a survey in Google Forms to send out, and Maze, because I created a um, test to have some user testing for the usability of the app. The duration is September, October, part of an online course. This is only the UX part of this project. I do have a UI part now, so I created like the landing page uh, or homepage for this um, this initial page of the the app during my UI course, but I will create a separate video for that. But this case study inclu includes only the UX process and decisions and uh, everything. Now we first need to to write out the problem. What type of problem uh, is there that we are solving? with this uh, product. The problem that I think is very prevailing is that we have to be more conscious of um, our environment. I think the, um, this generation and probably our generation like millennials or something, we have become a bit more conscious about protecting the environment, taking care of the planet and helping others. Uh, and the goal for the for the product is to give a space to find opportunities where you can volunteer and help out those in need much easier. Many different campaigns and volunteer opportunities are in one place. You don't have to like search Facebook or something or Google. And so the first step that I took in my during my course was to have a competitor analysis. I wanted to see what other apps there are out there and uh, I, I needed to, to showcase this in the case study. The two platforms that I think were closest to my idea were these Time Heroes and Voluntime. They are Bulgarian platforms. 
so it's not really like uh, all around social media type it's it's bulgarian so it's not like facebook where you can uh, be from anywhere in the world which i guess it could be they could be you know that that would be uh part of their cons that they're just like in bulgaria or in one um in one location and they don't serve multiple locations but i didn't consider it until now <laughs> and um After I did this competitor analysis, you know, I had a survey that I sent out. The conclusions that I got from the survey, I wrote out here. And the biggest uh, reasons for volunteering or for not volunteering of the people and how did I address them, they will be addressed later in the app, right? That's why I took them out like this in bigger circles so that it looks so that we know which which things to to fix and which things which are the positive things to support. The survey uh I wanted to to leave this feedback here. This is my thoughts and I wanted to have it here so that whoever's checking this uh case study knows that creating such a survey was new to me and I probably didn't ask all of the right questions which from the answers i gathered that this was that these were not the right questions and that's how i learned that you know next time ask better questions to find the answers that you want to find based on the survey results i created uh, my user personas or they were fleshed more fleshed out And I wanted to include here, because not everyone is going to read all of these, uh, the biography or whatever. So I just included photos of the user personas here. They're not that big, uh, though actually if we zoom into 100%. Okay, the text is big enough for you to, to read. But this is the main point, like why are these uh, personas created? What is this special and why is this special? Uh, and in the comment here, I said that there were uh, proto-personas created that I wanted to validate with the survey, but because yeah, I didn't have the correct questions in the survey or I didn't want to create a second survey, I just took the, took the second persona's information from the, the only survey that I, that I ran. So... It is what it is. That was the project. I had to write it here, okay? <laughs> and so we're going finally into the design process. And the first thing I included is the sitemap. I'm not very happy with how this looks, but I hope it's readable. Let's again zoom into 100%. It's not super readable, but I guess the main, the main point is my comment here that I wanted... Uh, th this is the homepage after you've logged in or registered, I wanted people to have the option of looking at the organizations and campaigns before they have a registration or have logged in and afterwards they can just do more things with that information, like they can sign up for organizations or campaigns, but they can still do something before the registration. And so after the, the sitemap, I decided to include this user flow because Yeah, this was my, uh, most of my ideas were based on this user flow. When you land on the page, you get registration uh, right from the get-go. So register, register button up here, register button down here. And so after you've registered, you can filter uh, the organizations or campaigns. The filtering can be done by different um, parameters like location, um, Like, it's uh, accessible, it's fine for teens, uh, you know, all these stuff. And then after you found the correct campaign organization for you, you can actually sign up for it, which will take you to your profile where you will have all your campaigns, all of your friends' connections and stuff like this. Th this is why these are included in their low fidelity wireframes, because it's just... I wanted to iterate quickly on this. That's why I created the user flow in, with these. But afterwards, I have included the, pro the 
high fidelity wireframes. And on Behance, I've also included the Figma prototype, the working prototype, so that anyone who is looking at the case study to, I don't know, click around, see how it is. Is it easy to use? Is it, you know, is it just uh, my opinion that it's easy to use? <laughs> uh, anyway, so here I included just a small uh, information of what the MVP to me was. I just wanted to uh, create some basic functionalities. I didn't want to include a lot of things. And why I created a web app instead of a mobile app. Um, I mean, I was a bit biased from the start. I did want to create a website or a web app. But from the survey results as well, there were results. Uh, the, the most answers were that they would probably use a mobile app. But the combined results of web app on desktop and web app on mobile were more than the mobile app. And because the mobile app is a bit more difficult and a bit more um, pricey to create. So I decided to create a web app which would be a bit more easier and developer time might be shorter. And that's why I decided to, uh, I wanted to include this information in here so that whoever is checking this knows why I decided that it will be a web app. Afterwards, the user testing, obviously with the prototype, the now working prototype and uh, the, the tasks that I gave the, um, the testers and why I wanted to give them these tasks, like why, what I wanted to find by them uh, going through these tasks, like why was that important to me and to the, the user, the, the application design. And so based on the user testing, I wrote some feedback I started the conclusion now because it has already become a very, a very big case study. But obviously this was the point, right? To write out everything that was important. But I am going to the conclusion now and the feedback that the people left. Mostly it was uh, easy to navigate the app. However, I included these misclicks down here because they should be fixed in the actual... Uh, in the next iteration, either of the UX uh, prototype or in the um, uh, UI, after the UI design has started, maybe these icons will not look like buttons that much, so people um, shouldn't click on them, like it should be obvious what they are. Uh, I decided to include this information in the case study, just so I can show that I take feedback well, I suppose. <laughs> Some of the challenges, though the whole project was a challenge to me, so... <laughs> Some reflections about what I've learned, what can, what could I have done better, what can be done better now, and the next next improvements and the next features uh, that can be implemented in the app. All of this in the conclusions, and that was it. Um, this took a long time, like two or three weeks to put together. It is a lot of work, especially if you haven't um, kept notes uh, while the process was going or while the course was going. But all in all, I think uh, it turned out pretty well. I wrote my thought process. I wrote my conclusions, my analysis. That's the important things that I know um, hiring managers, recruiters and whatnot uh, senior UX designers are looking for in case studies. So I think um, I will take feedback from whoever could give me some. I don't mind, obviously. So yeah, this is how the case study turned out. I hope you like it. Um, I'm going to show you also the case study for the UI part of this project in another video where I'm also going to explain what the steps I took for uh, creating the UI of the the homepage was. I, I hope that it will be interesting to you and I will see you there. Bye!